We are back with another episode, the Vach and Lum. Well, I said the Vach and Lum Broadus, the, the Lum Broadus podcast, Brian Broadus. Uh, so I have made this compilation of us now. I have put all of our videos in this one spot. So if anybody wants to come to the channel and find us, it's all in one thingamajig that's on the front of the channel there. So this, since this is going to be a weekly occurrence, I just can't get rid of you like that. Y'all can come yeah. tap in. So this is Brian Broadus. Uh, Y'all know who he is. One of, 105.3 The Fan, G Bag Nation. D the draft show is what we're really showcasing and coming up soon because draft is like tomorrow and uh yeah. and um love to start podcast with bobby bell what's up sir how you doing i'm doing great Vaj. how about yourself man you ready to get this thing going i am ready to get this thing going i have been watching day three uh uh tackles trying to get a trying to get a hold on what this team could possibly possibly be reaching for but i still have not watched tyler newbin i'm gonna watch him brian bros I, I just uh you know i'm just i'm just I'm just waiting the last second. I'm, I, what I really want to do is hunker down on these cowboy knees because I, I got a bunch of questions for you today. But uh, I just don't think we're going to be taking safety. We could take safety. I just don't think we're going to be taking safety. So maybe I've just been putting it off a little bit. But I'll watch them. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll. I'm sure that stack of yours, you know, player 216, 217, 218, that'll be all safeties. And that'll be the final three guys you get, right? That'll be the last three. Let's get going, bro. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question, sir. Um, do you know what cap means? You know, not like salary cap, but if a young person is talking to you, you say something, and they go, oh, Brian, that's cap. Do you know what that they means? They don't believe, is it they don't believe you? That's a lie. They don't believe you. There's yeah, they don't, yeah, it's a lie. Yeah, you're, you're telling a fib sophistry is going on right so okay. we're gonna play a little bit of truth or cap okay i'm just gonna cap oh, okay yeah i'm, I'm just okay. gonna i'm just gonna run some things by you and you tell me if it's true or if it's cap uh i've been on the internet lately brian bros and i've just been seeing a lot of buzz for a byu tackle um and i kind of like the byu tackle kingsley sul matea i know how i say sul matea ain't like how you say sul matea and bobby says it perfect um, yeah, but there's Sua Matea. Sua yeah. but yeah. there's a lot of buzz for him, and I like the player. Yeah. But there's mm -hmm. buzz for him at 24. I think yeah. that I think that's a bit rich. But I've been seeing a whole bunch of it. Brian, is that truth or is that cap? Can it have a little of both? Because this is the way I'm going to describe it. Okay. They like the player. They kind of feel like that potentially trading back would be the best for the player. Mm. At 24, I guess you could say it's cap, mm -hmm. but we're in a situation right now, Vosh, where we might be looking at these tackles at the end of the group, mm -hmm. the Guitons and the Sumatias. We might be looking at the end of them, and maybe you can't back out of there. If uh, folks on the site here watched the draft show yesterday, we we went uh, back in the draft and we went up in the draft. Just kind of just give you an idea of what it was going to take. I feel like that they're very comfortable with him and potentially Guyton if they were to back up. Uh, but if they had to sit there and pick the player, I think they would. Now that's you know that's just that's how much they like the kid, but they feel like that if they could go back and potentially get something and pick him up, that would be even better. That's your cake and eating it all at the same time. I like the player too, but I think even if I'm trading back, right, let's just say, I, let's say we trade back to 31, 33, mm -hmm. 34. I still think that's a bit rich for him because I can honestly look yeah. at, look at players in that range and be like, Hey man, I like Lam McConkey more than him. Or I like Darius Robinson more than him. Or I like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever player that I like, I think I'm, I think I'm going to like so many more players than him. Right. So do you, do you think, and, and maybe I can ask you this later, but do you think it's like tackle or nothing? Um, no, I don't. I, I okay. think thoughts what they're running into right now is there's going to be a run. And this is from guys and gals I've talked to around the league. Everybody feels like there's going to be a run on offensive players. And then all of a sudden, there's you're at the tail end of the best offensive players. Mm -hmm. And so they're, you know, that's kind of where they're at. You know, a lot of people's boards, I know my board goes 22 first round grades. They're sitting there at 24. You know, they're right at the tail end of the first round grades for a lot of for a lot of these teams. So with that being said they're kind of in that little bit of a no man's land situation where they really, really like players. The problem is a lot of the players they like are dealing with injuries that potentially could 
could take uh, them off boards, uh, could keep them on boards. I mean, this draft very well could come down to how it falls. I, I think that they would love for Graham Barton of Duke, the center, uh, you know, tackle projected center to be the guy that they could pick at 24. I think they would, I think they would do cartwheels at the star if that were to happen. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. So now you're looking at a situation with Powers Johnson, the center. How how healthy is he? You know, that's the question is that we know there's concerns there. He's an incredible player, but there's the injury history there, you know. And now you've got the questions about some of these tackles. Can they play left side? Can they play left tackle? No, some of them are right tackles. Some of them are guards. Uh, you know, those are the things that they're dealing with right now. There is not any real certainty for them at 24. Suamatea is a – we all have seen him play left tackle. I'm with you on where he falls on boards. I, you know, he is, he is the – near the, the last guy of a really good tackle group. So I, I, think, they're, I think they're trying to navigate that right now. And, uh, you know, but these these injuries that, you know, key positions that they're looking at, I think that's the struggle that they're really, really having to having to work through right now as they put the board together. So I think many teams like Jackson Powers Johnson, but of course, many teams are kind of concerned about his injury situation. Really concerned, really concerned. So let me ask you this. Are they concerned like. All right, well, we'll just take him in the third. Or or like is he off yeah. boards? Like like how how bad is it? I think that there's probably some teams that wouldn't have him on their boards. You know, much like, you know, we've he's really the total opposite of our defensive tackle sweat from Texas, mm-hmm. where people feel like that he doesn't care about football. You know, why is he 366 pounds? And you watch him play, he's an incredible player. But, you know, there's off the field things. So there's various reasons why guys are on boards and off boards. I think there's some teams who probably will have uh, Powers Johnson off their board because of some medical stuff. It's just how comfortable are you dealing with it? You know, uh, you know, Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from North Carolina State. How comfortable are you to dealing with a player that is, uh, you know, that has an injury history? You know, the Cowboys have had uh, themselves have had a history of taking players that do have medical concerns. So to them, they're a little bit more comfortable than maybe the Saints or the Buccaneers or the Rams. (sighs) This is just going to be it's going to be tough, man. This is going to I'm seriously this is going to be this is why we can't get a gauge. And I'll tell you why we can't get a gauge, Mm. because they can't get a gauge. Sure. That's that's you know we we generally in our little Dallas Cowboy world can figure out what they're going to do, mm-hmm. but when you talk to people who do this every single day, they're having the same struggles that we're having. Yeah, trying to figure out okay, where do we fall in the medical? Where do we fall in the playing ability? And what's going to happen ahead of us? I've been a fan of yours for a long time and you hate when I say that, but, but you really, unk, you really, you know, sensei of all this stuff. And what you've always said was that the fourth round was the, I went to jail round or the, I got hurt round. Right. Yeah. So criminal or injury round for sure. Yeah. So does that make it even more important to try to get into the fourth? So, you know, the, you know, just in case some of these guys are off the top three round board, they go, okay, I won't take sweat yeah. in day one or day two, Peyton Wilson, day one or day two, Jackson Powers Johnson, day one or day two. But those dudes are going to fly off the board at the, in the first few picks of the fourth round. Man. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Uh, this is where to me, uh, if I have a lot of uncertainty at 24, and I have a little bit more clarity at 32. Mm-hmm. This is where I pray that the Kansas City Chiefs call me yeah. because I know that I could potentially pick up, if you use charts, that I could pick up a three and pick up a four mm-hmm. for going from 24 to 32. If that's the case, I'm all about it. Let's go. You know, because there's so much uncertainty at 24 that I'm just going to find a way to. You know, I'll figure it out at 32, but you're going to give me a couple more options 
in the third round and you're going to give me another option that I didn't have in the fourth. Do you do you think that there's some urgency for them to try to um you know be on the phones trading back cuz you know some some years they're pre-draft. Yeah, some years pre-draft, yeah. Pre-draft, pre-draft. Okay, cool. Some years Yeah, no, okay I mean that. yeah, so you're right. I'm sorry. Uh, you please, know, and I'm please, sorry. Please. I I just jumped in there, but no, please, please, I used please. to do this for a living, you know. I mean, I used to get on the phone uh, you know, we, we put the board up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, I was a part of Friday, Saturday, Sunday drafts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that whole week you were working the phones, not only you're trying to figure out who somebody's going to take ahead of you or behind you, but you were trying to say, listen, Hey, call us, man. We're open for business. You know, Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, that was some responsibility I had for them was, Brian, call everybody, call all teams and tell them we're open for business. Mm -hmm. Let them know. Let them know that if you want to come up and take our pick, we'll listen to you. So, yeah, that this is where this is where it's going to fall on the pro guys in the building to be able to work or whoever's working their phones to be able to talk to these teams and say, listen, Kansas City, hey, if you're hunting somebody, come to us knowing knowing that, okay, you come up there, we're going to we'll let you have the pick. But, you know, if you could flip us that 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 third and that fourth, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it worth your while. So, yeah, this is the important time of the year for that of laying groundwork for teams to know that you're open for business. And I think the Cowboys are open for business. Cowboy fans' favorite person was on the radio the other day. And I just want to run a little bit of audio for you, Brian, and we could just react to it, sir, just a little bit. Uh let me just play a little bit of this for you, Brian. We'll just see what you're talking about here. Well, we just think you have to continue to evolve uh, as an offensive line, and certainly you hate to lose a player like uh, Tyron Smith, uh, who's going to, in my opinion, be a Hall of Famer. Uh, I think he's going to be wearing a yellow jacket, but at the same time, unfortunately, Tyron's had to miss a lot of games, and at some point you have to make those uh, tough decisions. First of all, I just think it's madness that the healthiest he's been and you finally got a program that works for him, the not practice program, now all of a sudden he too hurt. That's I can't stand it. But let's just finish this clip, though. Uh, certainly, uh, you, hate to, uh, you, know, you hate to lose uh, Tyler at center uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know what he had done for us. But at some point there, uh, you know, if you, you got to uh, make a tough decision that we can, uh, you know, have him uh, go to another team and uh, we can replace him hopefully and uh, uh, have a center who's better. And uh, we like the young guys that we've brought in here over the years. Uh, Not unlike Connor McGovern stepped up after being a backup, uh, you know. So Brian, let me ask you this. Um, So just listening to Cowboy Nation's favorite, favorite person, okay? What it sounds like he was alluding to is that, hey, we have a plan for tackle. That could be Walesco. That could be Austin Richards. But we're going to have to draft somebody to come in and be the new center. Brian, is that true or is that cap? That's true. That's not that's not cap. Uh, You know, unfortunately, we don't know. We have an idea of Austin Richards, North Carolina Austin Richards. We don't have an uh, an idea of Austin Richards, Dallas Cowboy. Um, we have an idea of well, let's go as a shoulder subluxation injury guy. You know, that's kind of what we're dealing with. They seem to like him, but we haven't seen him play with any consistency, whether it's practices, training camp, anything like that, you know, games. We haven't seen him play. So, yeah, um, you know, maybe they feel maybe they feel with the Doga is another thing. And I know that just drives people nuts to to think about that. But they're thinking, well, if we had to play with a Doga, we could, you know, but we all know that a Doga is not a very good tackle. Mm-hmm. But to them, you know, they, that's why they're in the business they're in, to try and figure these things out. They definitely need a center. So to 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 his point, you can talk about Brock Hoffman all you want, mm-hmm. but there are centers in this draft that are better than Brock Hoffman, and also better than uh, than what you had last year. And I and I, that that's the avenue that I would go. So you know we've been saying tackle all off season, right? Tackle, tackle, tackle at twenty four, tackle at twenty four. Do you think that they value or, or not value, but do you think that they're more urgent about center than tackle? I think so. Yeah, I, I really do. Um, to me, there's where they're picking at twenty four 
is likely going to be a quality center there. And we'll see what happens too, you know, as you go down through the draft where Frazier from West Virginia, where he falls on their board as well. Um, you know, there, there's, there's guys that can, you know, I feel like that Nordzad from Penn state and there's some, you start to get down in that fourth, fifth round with these centers. It's a little bit like what you were dealing with, with the Oddish, mm-hmm. you know, you know, he's a good player, but not to the level of say the top center. So the, the whole thing that's killing me right now, Vosh, is this, this thing with, with powers Johnson, mm-hmm. I watch him play and I Stood. see a 326 pound man getting two blocks on one play mm-hmm. and handling big inside players, you know, but is that something that is going to be, or we're going to, is it going to, is he going to have a career that's completely clean? You know, the Cowboys have dealt with an offensive lineman that's in and out of the lineup with Tyron Smith for years now. They've dealt with that. The center position is not a position that you can go in and out of the lineup with. So th- th- this is, this is, this is the, this is the tightrope that we walk when you're starting to talk about this guy could, this Powers Johnson could really, really help us. But how long are we going to have him for? Are we going to get him for, you know, five years, eight years, 10 years? You know, who knows? But there, there are some things that they're going to have to navigate with that, but that particular player. And we'll see if they're comfortable enough to do it. If they are, if they, if they draft him, then they feel like that, you know what, we'll deal with it. We'll, we will deal with whatever comes our way medically wise with him. Maybe he should, maybe he should quit just banging his head into people, you know, maybe, maybe then he won't. <laughs> my man, <laughs> my man has got a lot going on, but you know what? He's yeah. got a lot of good going on too. Sure do. Sure do. Brian Bryce. Um, this is what concerned me a little bit though, Brian, this is why I feel like this may be a little cap. Okay. Because yeah. I think the Cowboys never want us to know what the business is like, like for the last couple, like the Jason Garrett era was very transparent. They'll tell you what's going on. We knew Tristan Hill was the pick for like five weeks. Van Der took five weeks. Yeah. This, 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 this group isn't all that transparent. They're, they're very secret. They're very close to the vest with theirs. So I feel like if we ask them a question and they give us an answer, I feel like they don't really want us to know that answer. You know, um, Michael Mayer was the first round pick last year. Everybody was talking about either either tight end or Michael or, or like Michael Mayer, and that was halfway true because they did like Laporta, but like not as a first round guy, right? So when I'm hearing them say, "Hey, man, you know we can, we'll find us a center," and you know what I mean, we'll look at offensive line and we'll go from there. I think that's cap because I think if you really felt that way you'll probably say something like, oh, man, we'll just pick the best player. We'll, we'll, we're fine with the team we got. We can play center right now. We can play left tackle right now. We'll figure it all out. So that's why I think it's Cap Brown. With me saying that, do you still think that it's true that they prioritize center in that way? There's a couple of different ways I'm going this one. Sure. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I, I really do like what you're saying, and I, I think that you're on to something. I don't think they know, Vosh. Because let me say this, though, Brian. One more thing. One I don't think thing. they know. I don't – I honestly don't think – you know, you talked about the transparency and sure. Leighton Van Der Esch and all the, the times before. And, yeah, we, we got win, uh, you know, with with, uh, with with Tristan Hill and all that. We got the wind of all that. And we started to hear the day of the draft about the Laporta love. And it was a surprising, but mm-hmm. hell, they were right. McCarthy was the one that was pushing that train. Sure. But the thing is – I don't think there's transparency now because they don't know. Mm. They, I, I just, I get this feeling that they're, they're, they are wrestling with all this right now Mm. and they'll get a feeling when Thursday, when they, when they all sit in that room, they will have, whether it's right or wrong, Mm -hmm. they will get a feeling. And so your thing about the center, I think they know they need a center. I think they need. They know they need a center. Maybe they need a center more than a, a left tackle, and I think that that's the thing that they're they're wrestling with right now. Is they know that they, but their options there. They're hoping that one guy is going to be there, and they are thinking that you know what, if he's not there, we're going to have to make this call. Mm-hmm. So the transparency part of it, I think it's still in their bones. But right now, I don't think they know. 
and and we're sitting here, uh, you know, you know what, six days out. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've already we've had the first round this this time next week, and we'll know. But I I don't I don't know if I'm understanding your your question the right way. Sure. But I just there's a side of me that that when you when you look at the things that are presented to them. There's a lot of unknown there for them, and they don't have a real answer for it yet. Now they got time; they got time to figure it out. But I think they know they need a center bad. I, I they they didn't run the ball well enough. And you look at point of attack blocking, tight end, the center play; it wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. They know they need a center, and the problem is the one center they won't they want might be gone when when they pick. So I'm just trying to. Sure. Kind of walk you through. I, I usually like to say you could you could read what the Cowboys are looking at. You could yeah. you could, but now the the vibes that I'm getting are that they are trying to figure out a lot of things ahead of them. I don't think it's very clear cut right now at all. What if it's somebody that we're not thinking about? Would you be comfortable with yeah. like a with like a Murphy or like a Johnny Newton or like a Darius Robinson, go. Braden Fitz? Would you be Would you be fine with those? Chop Robinson, with, somebody like that. Yeah, with with yeah. those kind. Chop Robinson. We haven't we haven't talked about Chop Robinson a whole bunch here. Yeah. Do you like they love traits? They love athleticism and measurables there and you all. Go. You ain't even got to be a great football player with a. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be super nuanced for them. The, the Cowboys love the the raw player with the high traits that they feel like they can fix. Chop Todd Robinson will be sitting right there and he's probably high on their board. Would you be fine with a guy like that? Yeah. See, there you go. That, that to me, if, if you have, you know what you get in chop Robinson. Sure. I think, you know what you get in chop Robinson. I think there's a lot of things you mentioned Newton. I think you understand what you get in him, you know, uh, from Illinois, Yeah. Uh, with these corners. I think you understand what you get in them. I just, and the more I talk to people about it, and not just Cowboy people, but people around the league, we keep saying these offensive players, all these quarterbacks, these tackles, wide receivers, they all start going. And next thing you know, you're going to be running out of offensive players. Mm-hmm. You're going to be looking at defensive players. And here we are. We're looking at Chop Robinson. You know, we're looking at Murphy from Texas. We're looking at, man, these are these are really damn good players. And everybody's going to scream, well, gosh, it's, you know, Lodge Bryant, it's not a center. It's not a tackle. You know, why are you drafting an edge? Why are you drafting a three technique? Why are you taking a corner? You know, see, that's that's the that's the problem. But the best player on their board <laughs> might be a defensive player when it gets down to them at 24. So, like, we know that the Cowboys have no 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 problem benching Jordan Lewis or rotating Jordan Lewis, no matter how much money he makes. So what if it's like Kenyon Mitchell, cornerback from um uh Toledo? What if it's him? Toledo. What if it's him? See, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. It's if, if one of those guys, one of those top defensive, one of those corners, yeah. you know, and you're right about your safety, you know, you're not going to probably see anything of the safety, Mm-mm. but I think that all defensive positions are open. Yeah. You know, what if they get, they, they, they could get, they could get wiped out as far as they go. And I know they like Wilson. Mm hmm. But I know they like Cooper too from Texas A&M, the linebacker. Sure, you know it might be that like, listen, we would rather take Cooper, linebacker, than Suamatia or take a banged up center. Sure, you know, and, I, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it about the banged up center. He's not. He's dealing with some medical issues. Sure, you know that you have to you have to be comfortable with. And if they're not comfortable with that, I could see them. You said it, Chop Robinson, Penn State. Yeah, there's. You know, you could take a guy that like, well, this guy could help us. But, you know, to Cowboy Nation, it's like they would scream bloody murder. You didn't address, you know, you're just you're 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 setting Dak up for failure again. He doesn't have a center. He doesn't have a tackle. He doesn't have, you know, you know, the draft. Sometimes you have to say, listen, we're not going to force uh, we're not going to force a need here just to force a need. Mm-hmm. We Let's take a guy that can help us. And then we'll circle back on potentially addressing that need. Back to Steven. <laughs> he also said, I don't have a clip. So a I'm lot just, of things. I don't have a clip, so I'm just going to say it. He also said, hey, I'll tell you what, man, this whole Mozzie thing, his yeah. style really wasn't what Dan Quinn wanted him to do. And maybe Zimmer's scheme is a little more on par with what Mozzie likes to do. 
Brian Broaddus, is that true or is that cap? Man, that's uh, that's a lot of cap. That's big, and big cap, Brian Broaddus. But go ahead, tell me why this cap. I have, we all have the image in our head of Will McClay standing up in the war room. And let me tell you this. I got my ass chewed out by Will McClay one time for something I said about Dan Quinn, yeah. you know, and he, he, Will makes, Will and I are, you know, we, we we have a working relationship, you know, I mean, I ask him questions, he gets mad at me, he never texts me or anything when I say something nice about him, so here we go, <laughs> but I think Will McClay is damn good at his job, I really do, now he and I have had some differences over the years, and that's fine, you know, I respect him for that. But there is nobody, nobody in that building that had had Dan Quinn's back more than Will McClay. And Will McClay is not going to pick a player that Dan Quinn doesn't want. He's not going to do it. He's not going to fight for somebody that Dan didn't didn't want. You know, when it came down to the guard or Bergeron or Mozzie Smith. Mm -hmm. Will stood up in that room and made a passionate speech for why they needed to draft Mozzie Smith. And he didn't do that on his own. He he had Dan Quinn in mind when he did that. So for Steven to say not a fit, you know, see, you know, I've talked to Mike Zimmer. You know, Mike and I go way, way back. Mike is going to do the best he can to put some weight on Mozzie Smith and try and help him get to where he needs to be. We all know that Mozzie Smith plays a tick late off the line of scrimmage. That's why probably Mozzie Smith lost weight because he thought it would make him quicker. You know, he doesn't read. Michigan plays the scheme. Watch, other than Aiden Hutchinson, who we watched, you know, several years ago, a couple years ago, I mean, coming off that edge, you know, the way he played. But if you look at the interior way that Michigan plays their defensive line, Chris Jenkins Jr., three technique, read, react. Mozzie Smith, read, react, you know. Mozzie just didn't translate. It didn't – he he was playing the Michigan scheme when they were asking him to play it more of a quicker – and that's on that's on Will, that's on, that's on Jerry, that's on Steven, that's on Dan Quinn, that's on all those guys, AD, all those guys that drafted the player. They knew what they were getting into. Will just pushed it over the top. And so for Steven to come out and say – Maybe not the Dan Quinn way of playing things. You're right, Cap. So that made me start to go look at these tackles, Brian, or just look back at them. And mm -hmm. the problem is you got a bunch of tackles in this class, and I like a lot of them, but they're not the, the type of tackle you need. It's a lot of threes in here. It's a lot of 280-pound yeah. tackles in here, 290-pound tackles in here. All the LSU kids don't even really seem all that big to me, you know? They're not. Um, so – I'm trying to find the one tech guys. I'm trying to find the noses. I think sweat is out. I think everybody's dreaming of sweat because they know of sweat and he caught the, the two point conversion and all that. I think, I think sweat is out uh, for many reasons. I just think that we're probably going to value something else. And by the time the roundage, which is like the fourth round, maybe late third by the time, you know, teams say, okay, it's time to take sweat. Now it's third to one other teams trying to get sweat over us. I just don't, I don't want to get my hopes up for sweat, okay? So now I'm looking at like Ruke Oro Oro from Clemson, or I'm looking at mm -hmm. the uh, Boyd kid from Northern Iowa. We always talk mm -hmm. about Jackson from Texas A&M, um, yeah. Jefferson from LSU. He's he's a he's a little bigger. Um, mm -hmm. So Brian, we're just scraping to trying to find three techs, put specifically guys that's a little heavy, like like a little over 315, 320, or something like yeah. that. Justin Rogers from Auburn is 6'2", yeah. 330. You know what I'm saying? So he's yeah, tell me tell me about what you what your Justin Rogers one, if you would. So Justin Rogers is probably gonna be a a day three special. He's in that Bohanna yeah. mode. He's in the Ridgeway mode. Like, hey, you're not going to get pass rush from him. He's going to push pockets if you just happen to catch him on the field and pass him the football. But he eats double teams. He's 330 pounds. He gets on a knee and he keeps his linebackers from 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 getting blocked. Like, that's who he is. Is he the best at doing it? No. There are some dudes on this on this class that'll probably be better than him. But he's probably the last of the 300 and and it's not a bunch of 330 pound dudes on his list at all, Brian. No, but he's not the at all. but he's the last of the 300. 
and 30 pound dudes. He may be a, a late day three guy. He may go undrafted. I think he could play. I think you should draft him, but he's the, the last of the guys. So just me looking at this, Man, three tech could help you if you're looking as a rotate for Mozzie. I mean, a rotate for Osa. Then if we don't pay Osa, he'll be your three tech of the future. But we need one tech, Brian, and it doesn't seem like there's a whole bunch of them. What are we gonna do yeah, about one tech in this draft? Yeah, and I, you know, and I, and you're right about some of the potential one techniques. I know you know Mason Smith from from LSU. Uh, you know, is a guy that could probably play the one for you. And you know, this this kid was a five star recruit. Mm-hmm. And the problem was, Zavach, he was dealing with a lot of injuries while he was at LSU. He had a shoulder problem. He had a knee problem. I mean, he's, he's, he's got an initially a really good quick first step, and then he'll lose some momentum after that. So he pray, plays pretty well laterally along the line of scrimmage. He's got some functional strength. The pad level tends to get a little tall. But, man, you need guys that are going to hold up mm-hmm. at the point of attack. And I know a lot of people are talking about him, but when this pad level gets high, he, you know, he gets in trouble. He needs a little bit better plan as a pass rusher. That was another problem. But this guy's got huge potential. The injuries have been a problem, and the lack of playing time, I think, has to be a really, really big concern back there. You know, I, if I'm going to reach on a one technique, and, and you, you brought the name up, and I could be dead balls wrong about this one, but I'm going to reach on McKinley Jackson, yeah. and I'm, and I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Gosh, that I can somehow get back in this draft if I can move back, if I can pick up an extra, if you pick up an extra three, an extra four, I would consider using it on a guy like McKinley Jackson. Oh, and okay, I might have to draft him around early, mm-hmm. just because you know what I'm I'm betting on a guy, and, and maybe this is wrong to look at it this way, but for a 326 pound man. He is really explosive, sure. and he does a great job of getting off the ball. He's you constantly watching him play against – you know, I was watching against Miami and Auburn, and he is like – I mean, he is like jarring their their guards, the center. I mean, he is jarring them, you know, knocking them back. And he faces a ton of double teams. He moves like a much smaller guy. And so the redirection, the anchor – okay – I'm saying all these things about a guy that's 6'2", 326, but I, you know, maybe he's a fourth round guy. Maybe I have to take him in the third round. And I know folks on our platform here are saying, well, damn guys, why are you talking about taking another one technique in the third? I feel like this guy can really, really, really help you in what you don't have. Now we'll see what happens with Mozzie. You know, can Mike Zimmer do some magic with him? But if you gave me the opportunity to have to maybe reach on a guy, I think I'm going to reach on McKinley Jackson from Texas A&M. So Jackson is six one. Do you think the Cowboys fool with that at all? Do you think the 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 Cowboys yeah. like these shorter one tech? Well, the fact is that you know he's a, the weight is not a problem for him though. Yeah, you know, the height is a little bit, but the thing about him is you you see him anchor down. Yeah. And, you know, and these, these, these guards and centers, they double team him and he just, he holds that point of attack. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's, there's things that he does as a pass rusher that makes me give a little like, okay, he might be a little bit of a shorter guy, but in a way it might help him the way that he plays with leverage. He uses the club, he uses the rip, he uses the spin. Uh, he can twist if you want to play games with him. He, you know, he's very quick in the way he works into the pocket. So I, I think that you know, you get a guy with that size, six one, three twenty six, the way he's able to get linemen off balance. I, I'm, I'm willing to overlook the lack of, of height in order to get the explosiveness and the power that maybe I need for the position. Well, you said something earlier, Brian. You said the willingness the willingness to reach for him, right? And I feel like every single pick last year, maybe except Overshawn, right? But every pick was like around early. You know, Mozzie was around early. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm already forgetting Luke and all those Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker was probably around early, yeah. Um, Junior Fajoko. Like, I I just just feel like the Cowboys took a lot of those guys around early. Do you think that's something that we're going to get a healthy dose of this year, Brian? Yeah, what happens to you, Vash, when you're sitting there uh, late in the draft 
you know, Dallas is at 24. If they were a little further back, say they were 28, you almost have to plan that if you like a guy, you're going to have to go around early because likely that player's not going to come back to you. You know, I, the Frazier, the center from, from West Virginia, is a really good example of that way. If you were higher up in the draft, say in the 40s, you got a shot to get Frazier. 41, 42, you're up there and those picks. You got a chance to get Frazier. When you're sitting at 56, you're probably going to lose out on a guy like that. Sure. So if you you almost have to think about your board of being around early in a lot of ways, the further down you're the board. Vach says this. <laughs> um I don't think the Cowboys take running back in the first three rounds. Truth to cap, Brian brought us. I think that's cap. Okay. Tell me what because okay, so, so I think it's cap and mm-hmm. but they might not take a running back. They might not take a running back in the second round. Mm-hmm. But the third round, I think they're hunting a running back. Sip your I think, water. I, I tell you why, Brian Brown. Sip your water and I tell you why. Because just listen to what we've been saying today, right? Just the 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 lack of 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 clarity and all and the 30 visits, cool, Brian. But let's just say yeah. they're really all in for a center. Defensive tackle looking crazy, so you just say, "Hey, I'll take one in the third round just to make this make sense." Yeah. So now no, you, right. so now you're looking dead at dead at the the second round. We can't running back in the second round, Brian brought us, and we and we looking at all the wide receivers that are there, the possible corners that are there, the possible um, offensive linemen that may be there for you, Brian. I just don't think it'll make sense all the way. Now, if if you can find a way to trade back and get a pick in the fourth, then I'm betting you then fourth round pick is right is right where running back is going to go. But just based on what we need and how this board linebacker, we ain't talk about linebacker, bro, but just what we need and how I think this board is going to fall and how the best player is going to be there and us playing a little early, I don't think there's a way we can fit running back in the first three uh, rounds. But it could be capped, though. Tell me why it's capped, though, bro. Well, I think it's cap because I think they're hunting one. Mm -hmm. I think they realize that they need. And the question you have to ask yourself about Brooks from Texas is when will he officially be ready? Is he going to be a guarantee he's going to get drafted? Say the Cowboys pick him. We're going to be told that he's going to work all off season here leading up to the uh, season. He's going to be with Britt Brown. He's going to start on the pup list. You know, will he be practicing at all? He might start on, you know, you you might you get him on the active roster. He might really not be ready for the first couple of games. We need to know where Brooks's availability really, really is. You know, Benson from Florida State makes a whole lot of sense. I, I love both those kids. Mm-hmm. But they've also protected themselves. If they do what you say they're not going to do, you know, fourth round maybe? Are we looking at Allen? Guys like Estime, guys like that. I that's. It's I tough. think that they're they're hunting, they're hunting linebackers and they're hunting running backs. But yeah, for me, you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, I can. A lot of people have earmarked Brooks to Dallas in the second round. That might not be might not be a possibility. I, I think. It, it might be just like you said. I think it's more of a third round player than it is a second round. If 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 to be honest, because but it, we can't turn it. We gotta determine what is the better back, running back. I like Will Scott. Yeah, I like him a lot. Well, Brian, our timing is perfect. Right at the end of the last question that I asked you, your Wi-Fi started Wi-Fi again, so we just go go ahead and wrap this up, and uh, and uh, we gonna run it back next week, man. Um, it's this this was this was this was fantastic. There you go, give us a thumbs up to get you up out here, Brian Bros. One hundred five three fan G Bag Nation, uh, Love and Star Park. Hey, look, they're they're gonna be doing three days of of draft coverage on Dallas. I'm gonna leave you up there stuck just like that. They're gonna be doing three days of draft coverage. <laughs> Three days of of uh, of draft coverage. Uh, uh, day one, day two, day three. But when we make the first round pick, uh, Brian Broaddus will be here on Friday, and me and him are going to talk about that one player and really break it down and see how that player fits and where they go, uh, how they navigate within our depth chart and all that. So we will tap in with that. Brian Broaddus, thank you so much for being here. 
What you say, Brian? What was that? Brian said what now? All right, Brian, Brian says, hey, man, it's a uh, it's, uh, dope to to be here, Brian uh, Vach. I appreciate your audience, and uh, uh, shout out to you for having me on. All right, yo, Brian, appreciate you back. All right, man, until next time, man, y'all hold down for the dose of the peace of Till next time, shalom.